Hello and welcome to the Boxing Insider, where this week we simply have to talk about the big issue in the sport right now, judging. What do I think of it? I think it's an embarrassment on boxing, a um, stain on boxing. But at the same time, in a selfish way, I'm glad it happened last week. People just want to win if they win and lose if they lose. And in the game, we've seen so many um, boxing decisions go the opposite way. And I just think, what are they watching? A clear scoring criteria mapped out on the British Boxing Board of Control website, I think is absolutely the easiest thing that the British Boxing Board of Control could do tomorrow. Just over a week ago, the undisputed super lightweight world champion, Josh Taylor, clung on to all of his belts against fellow Brit Jack Catterall in Glasgow. The result sent shockwaves through the sport of boxing. Regarding the judges, the, the boxing board should do something about it. If it's a football referee, a premiership referee, he would be downgraded. But no, there's no accountability. They just think that, oh, that's OK, on to the next one. Well, no, that's not good enough. And, you know, people are getting fed up with it. And we've got terrible negative press about the fight negative press about the judging rather than about the fight and Jack Catterall's performance. So I thought that was, you know, you know, it's just, it's just not right. So they need to do something about it. We can't be telling our next generation of fighter, work 10, 15, 20 years of your life, dedicate that amount of time of your life to becoming the very best in, in the business. And when you get there and you do it right in front of our eyes, we're going to steal that dream from you. That can't happen anymore. We need to have fundamental change because the 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 business, if you could call it that, of, of the British Boxing Board of Control is, is broken. It's not fit for purpose in its current state and it needs to change. Yes, it's disgusting. It's, it's a really disgusting feeling. Um, one that I never want to feel again. And, you know, unfortunately, Jack Catra probably felt exactly how I felt. Um, he may not ever have that opportunity. Actually, I don't think he will. If Josh Taylor moves up, he will never have the opportunity to become an undisputed world champion again. Because once Josh Taylor moves up, the belts go everywhere. They don't go to one person. They go everywhere else. All the mandatories, all the you know, people who are who lined up to fight for those belts will fight for them. So Jack Hatch has probably lost his chance of ever becoming an undisputed world champion when he should have been crowned that on last Saturday. I think I think there's a lot of incompetence in in boxing and and how it's regulated, uh, and I also do believe there is some kind of corruption. Uh, I'm not quite sure where where it's coming from right now. Uh, I've got a lawyer working with us, and hopefully we'll get can, some kind of justice. Uh, and I've, I've said it enough times now; it's never going to bring back Saturday night. But something needs to be done. Somebody needs to find out where the corruption is coming from and how we can how we can get get rid of it from the sport. Rob Smith refuted the suggestion that there was any cor corruption. Yeah, I mean, pfft, the boxing, it's run by dinosaurs. Uh, nothing's changed over the last 50, 100 years. Uh, we've seen it in fights before that we've all watched and, and said the wrong man got this. They said, oh, we'll have an investigation. Nothing has ever come from mm -hmm. it and it can't keep, can't keep happening. Josh Taylor got the nod from two of the judges as he won by split decision. But most people watching the contest, myself included, felt that Jack Catterall had held on for a fairly comprehensive victory. And the fallout continues to this day. The British Boxing Board of Control has said it's going to investigate the scoring of the fight. It's been reported in recent days that the WBO had previously objected the appointment of two of the judges. And the Speaker for the House of Commons has referred the matter to the police, believing the sport has been brought into disrepute. So it's clear, boxing has a major issue. But how do we go about judging a fight? Well, here's TalkSport commentator Andy Clark. Judging a fight is actually quite straightforward in terms of what you're looking for. People talk a lot about how it's subjective and in some senses it is, but in other senses it really isn't. And what you're looking for basically is who punches most effectively out of the two fighters over the course of a three minute round or a two minute round if you're dealing with, with women's boxing and the way it was described to me by a, a border control judge uh, a while ago when I was kind of investigating all this stuff myself was that if you've got a 12 round fight then you've got 12 individual three minute fights that's what it is and you judge each one individually and neither and no round has any bearing on how you would score 
any other round. They're, they're separate entities. And at the end of that three minutes, you need to try and find a winner. I don't score drawn rounds myself. I think you should be able to find something in there um, to make sure that you that you get the winner, but, but plenty of people do. And what you're looking for really is, as I say, who does the most effective punching? I look at it in terms of a computer game. So if you think about that, you've got a, a fight game on a computer or whatever, energy bars at the top. Both both fighters have got full energy bar at the start of the round. Now you deplete your opponent's energy bar by punching them. A heavy punch will take a big chunk off it. A little punch will take a smaller chunk off it. And you have to work out at the end of the round, you have to decide whose energy bar is the most full. And whoever's is most full wins the round. Then they reset to full and you go again at the start of the next round. Now that can be difficult because if you've got one opponent who lands five heavy shots and you've got one who lands 15 lighter shots, nobody looks like they've really hurt the other. So there's no obvious physical reaction. How do you decide who was punched more effectively in that round? How do you decide who has landed the greater tonnage of punch, if you like, if you're going to think about it as, as scales? That's difficult. And you might decide it's one way and I might decide it's another. So in that sense, it can be it can be subjective. But that really is what you're looking for. And one thing you'll hear from people often is, oh, it depends what you like. It doesn't depend what you like. That, that's the biggest nonsense phrase of all time. I, I know what people mean by it. They talk about, do you prefer the fighter going forward or the fighter, maybe the more technical fighter who boxes off the back foot and counter punches? It doesn't matter what their styles are. All that matters is who lands what. That's it. End of story. I was lucky enough to speak to the WBC heavyweight world champion Tyson Fury ahead of his press conference for his huge fight at Wembley Stadium against Dillian White. Now, there's something the Gypsy King said which really made me stand up and take notice. Yeah, I've right. seen an article that Frank, uh, Frank Warren said recently that there'll be no British judges for this fight and uh, I reiterate that as well. Those words echo around my training camp. We don't want no British judges for this fight. Um, we want um, proper, uh, experienced judges who will do the right thing. And if Dylan White beats me, give him the decision. Do not try and rob anybody in this fight. Give the man the decision. Give him what he deserves. And if I win, do the same for me. In boxing, these fighters, they don't want any gifts. They don't want robbery decisions. People just want to win if they win and lose if they lose. And in the game, we've seen so many um, boxing decisions go the opposite way. And I just think, what are they watching? A powerful statement from one of the key figures inside the sport. So is this just a British issue? Well, I put that question to American boxing journalist, Dan Raphael. But I don't think it's it's limited just to what takes place in the UK whatsoever. I, believe me, I've seen, I've been doing this a long time, James, and I've seen plenty of terrible scorecards, both uh, in the United States for fights I've been at, fights I've watched on television, fights I've watched uh, from around the world, frankly. Uh, it is not a, a problem uh, that is limited to the United States or to Great Britain or to anywhere else in Europe or Asia or South America, you name it. Uh, boxing is a, is a subjective sport, first of all. People have to remember that. Um, I also like to make the point when we talk, when I, and I talk to, I've talked to people about judging plenty of times. You know, there are times where you could see an exceedingly close fight, 10 or 12 extremely close rounds. And you're just giving it to the same guy because he's eking out the rounds each time. So when you, when you add up your score at the end of the fight, you might have a scorecard that does read 10 rounds to two. But that doesn't mean it's a wipeout because every single three minute session was close and competitive. And boxing is, judged obviously on individual three minute sessions. So it's conceivable for you to have a wipeout score in a fight that in actuality was awfully competitive. So this is clearly an issue across the globe, but how do we go about fixing it? My big thing is also the way that we judge fights, because if you go on the British Boxing Border Control website, there is no criteria. In fact, throughout the whole course of boxing, this is gonna sound mad to people that aren't boxing fans, there is no unified criteria of how to judge a fight. So if you go on the WBC's website, they have the pillars of how you score a fight. The WBA have something very, very different. The WBA even give you a, a pat on the back for sportsmanship. What's that all about? Do you get a point for touching gloves at the start of the fight? The British Boxing Board of Control have got three lines. There's a 100-page document on their website. They've got three lines on how to score a fight. That's not good enough. We This can't be ambiguous anymore because that then opens the door for 
the word corruption and, and people's interpretation of how to score a fight. Let's have it black and white. Let's have it like Moses Ten Commandments. Let's have it there on the website. This is how you score a fight. This is what we're looking for. And if we're all going to adhere to the 10 point must system, we should be looking for clean punches, effective aggression, ring generalship and defense. That's it. That's all you need to do. And if you go back then to the fight that we're talking about in Glasgow between Josh and Jack, when you're talking about clean punches, Josh Taylor outlands Jack Catterall with clean punches in one of the 12 rounds. Now, of course, you've got other things to consider, like effective aggression, where you could most certainly give him the second and the seventh round as well. So now you're up to three rounds for Josh Taylor. Ian John Lewis gave him eight. It is virtually impossible to give Josh Taylor eight rounds in that fight. It's impossible to give him seven as, he, as Victor Lachlan did. So a clear scoring criteria mapped out on the British Boxing Board of Control website, I think is absolutely the easiest thing that the British Boxing Board of Control can do tomorrow. It's all down to the competence of judges. And I think people need to be pulled up and possibly suspended when they do not um, judge correctly. And I think in this case, I think you shouldn't just be allowed to have a bad night judging and then just be judging the next week. It just doesn't work. We saw it with Adelaide Bird when she scored 118, 110 to uh, Canelo Alvarez in that first fight with Gennady Golovkin. So wrong, 10 rounds to two, she was way off the pace because Golovkin won that by eight rounds to four or seven rounds to five, clearly, and she was suspended. I think judges need to be suspended and, it, and they, they need to know that they have to perform in order to be there making those decisions. Because at the end of the day, there's no, there's, no, um, uh, there's no way for Jack Cattrall to make an appeal either to Court of Arbitration Sports, because um, it can't be overturned. The WBO have been informed about it. There were three other belts there on the line. Um, it, it, it's, it's an anomaly in the system that you cannot reverse a decision in that way because all it is is judging. It's not, no one's cheated, there isn't any corruption there, I don't believe there is. Um, but what they need to do is find a way of being able to overturn a decision because Jack Catterall should be celebrating the new sponsors, million pound fights, um, and should have secured his dream and his legacy and now he's picking up the, the pieces of his shattered dreams. I, I, I've heard some people suggest that there should be more judges to score, uh, which would, you know, uh, make it more scores to go through so you'd have less chance of uh, of this happening. I don't necessarily agree with that, only because it, to me, it's just another opportunity for there to be more bad scorecards, uh, the potential for more problems. Um, you know, where do you put them? Do you, do, you, do you, you know, there's four sides of the ring. You see, you know, three judges on three sides, and then you have obviously the uh, the folks that are on the, on the commission and, and and doing television et cetera, taking up the space on the fourth side. So I don't know what the answer is, but I, I know that uh, I'd like to see it improve. I don't think it would really make any difference if you if you change the scoring system, for example. That's something that people come up with often. And, and one thing that I have thought about down the years, because I cover a lot of international amateur boxing, where the system's slightly different. Um, and international amateur boxing... You can score around 10-9, 10-8, or 10-7. 10-9 for a close round win. 10-8 for a comprehensive round win. It doesn't have to be complete domination. Uh, at 10-7 for, for complete domination. And, and in amateur boxing, if you score a knockdown, that doesn't necessarily mean that you will win the round 10-8. In professional boxing, it almost always does mean that. So they've got a bit more leeway there to differentiate between a close round and a dominant round, which you don't really get in professional boxing because if you win the round, but you don't get a knockdown, it'll be 10-9. Very, very occasionally, you'll see someone give a 10-8 without a knockdown, but you can have a really, really dominant round. You can belt your opponent all over the ring, but if you don't get the knockdown, it'll just be 10-9. And I do think that that is potentially a bit of a problem, but it really just comes down to the competence of the people who are in the judges' seats because if the competence levels aren't high enough, then you'll just get the same arguments again and again. So just how bad is judging and what can we do to try to fix it? Well, boxing has been littered with controversial decisions down the years, so it's nothing new, but the major outcry when it comes to British judges is a real concern. When you consider just how much is at stake in boxing and just how much was on the line for Jack Catterall when he stepped in the ring against Josh Taylor, it does seem remarkable how a sport relies on so much subjectivity. 
Everybody I've spoken to in recent days says that something needs to be done. However, very few are willing to come up with constructive solutions about how we make judging better. I thought two of the contributions from Andy Clark and Adam Cattle were brilliant, but boxing's a sport which is set in its ways. It's not willing to conform. So whether or not it takes on board any of these suggestions or not, we wait and see. I don't think a huge amount is going to change. I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk about bad judging when it comes to fights on these shores. We'll be back with another episode of the Boxing Insider next week. But in the meantime, like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our boxing content across the TalkSport network.